We are a U.S. Department of Interior Bureau of Reclamation facility. Above and below us on the river is U.S. Department of Interior National Park Service land. We are collectively owned by the U.S. government and ultimately the American taxpayer. It's the demand for water that dictates the operation of the Hoover Dam. Electricity is produced as a side benefit of meeting the demand for the water. We work around the clock to release water needed by cities, irrigation districts, and many other users. This dam is 660 feet thick at the base. It's a mere 45 feet thick at the roadway. It's sort of shaped like a two-sided pyramid or an inverted wedge. It's 1,244 feet across the crown, 726.4 feet tall, and just 78 feet wide at the very base. Herbert Hoover, the man who the Hoover Dam is named for, was Secretary of Commerce under Calvin Coolidge's administration. So it fell to Secretary Hoover to divide the Colorado River resources, the water, into an upper and a lower basin state configuration. There's Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado in the upper basin, and then you have Arizona, Nevada, California, and New Mexico in the lower basin states with the upper basin states getting approximately seven and a half million acre feet a year and the lower basin states getting the same approximate amount of water with a million and a half acre feet going to the country of Mexico. Now an acre foot of water just for your information is a football sized area of land covered approximately a foot deep in water. So that divides the resources of the Colorado River Basin equitably. As the water comes to the Hoover Dam it is stored in the largest man-made reservoir in America called Lake Mead. That lake can hold up to 30 million acre feet of water or a two-year supply of the Colorado River. That is the water that is then let out downstream for agriculture primarily in Southern California. Southern California gets four and a quarter million acre feet per year of water from the Colorado River. Lake Mead is currently at 56 percent of its capacity. The Department of Interior and the Bureau of Reclamation who are charged with managing the water in the West actually feel that the reservoirs and the dam system here along the Colorado River Basin are doing exactly what they were designed to do. That is, store a reliable source of water that can be delivered downstream for water users and providing some electricity and flood control for the Colorado River Basin states. The water level does present a challenge to them, but they feel like with the proper engineering they can definitely overcome those challenges of the lower water levels that we're seeing today. The turbines that we have installed here at the power plant today are Francis-style turbines designed to run under a specific pressure called the head pressure, the difference between the elevation of the water in the lake and the elevation of the water in the river below the dam. And as that water pressure changes or alters as a result of the drought, the engineers find that by making some simple adjustments to the turbines, they are actually able to uh, maximize the output and continue the uh, Im impressive efficiency that the plant produces now. The turbines were replaced in the mid-1980s with stainless steel adjustable wicket gate turbines. We are now able to adjust the wicket gates to maximize the horsepower and provide for the most efficient use of the generators producing the electricity while conserving more water. This will be the Arizona powerhouse. There are nine generators in this particular wing. There are a total of 17 generators here at the Hoover Dam, nine on the Arizona side, eight on the Nevada side. There's an extra generator here in this particular bay because it's half-sized and it provided power directly to Boulder City, the city that built the dam and where the workers lived while they were constructing the Hoover Dam. Here on the floor in front of us now is a Pelton water wheel and it's a service generator. The reason we call it a service generator is because the electricity from that machine and another one just like it in the Nevada powerhouse across the river are used to run this plant. Now the cranes that you see here in the bay, that crane is a 300 ton traveling bridge crane. And there's another one just like it at the far end of the building. Both those cranes can move back and forth the whole length of this bay on the tracks that you see on the sides of the walls above our heads. When they're hooked together, they can lift up to 600 tons. Each generator weighs 585 tons. If you look at that first generator there, the light tells us that that generator is currently online. If you see that the center of A1 there has a large metal disc spinning inside, that's called the generator drive shaft. That drive shaft is 38 inches across and about 65 feet tall. It's stainless steel in three sections. That drive shaft 
represented here on this diagram shows you just how long it is. As the water flows in through what's called the penstock, it goes into the scroll case, and as it goes through the scroll case, it spins that turbine. And the turbine obviously was attached to the drive shaft. And the drive shaft is spinning the internal components of the generator there inside the housing, what's called the rotor and the stator. The rotor is comprised of a series of magnets spinning in a, a, a circle, and the stator is a big copper wiring. As the rotor spins inside the stator, it produces an electromagnetic force. And that force essentially is the electricity that goes out through the walls of the uh, powerhouse through what's known as a bus bar and into a step-up transformer. Now that step-up transformer takes the voltage from each generator, which is 16,500 volts, and steps it up to 220,000 volts. As you see the water swirling out from underneath the concrete foundation there, that's 22,000 gallons of water a second coming out of each of those turbines. Once the electricity is generated and leaves the transformers, it actually belongs to the Western Area Power Administration. 56% of the electricity goes directly to the Los Angeles metropolitan area, 25% remains in the state of Nevada, and then the 19% that's remaining for a total of the 100% of power produced at the Hoover Dam goes to Arizona cities and towns. Those percentages were adopted decades ago in the original contracts for the sale of the electricity from the Hoover Dam, and those contracts are still in place today. All told, this facility can uh, provide electricity for a little over 1.1 million homes. Each generator produces 135 megawatts of power, so the whole plant produces around 2,200 megawatts, give or take a megawatt here and there.